Hello everyone. As to be expected, Putin went to Mongolia, and Mongolia, who is supposedly one of the countries that acknowledges the um, authority of the International Criminal Court, did nothing. Looks like we maybe had some protesters out there, but other than that, not a damn thing. And as we discussed yesterday, of course, you know, International Criminal Court can try and reason with the government of Mongolia or any other country that Putin goes to, uh, try to, you know, emphasize that they owe a debt to the international community and so on and so forth. However, however, unless there are ways to enforce all of that, nothing happens. And not only that, but you know, nothing happens to Putin, but there is nothing that is going to happen to Mongolia. What are, we, what are they going to do? Like, you know, slap the wrist, you know, say, badly done, guys. I'm sure that's going to have no effect whatsoever. As we mentioned before, there is a lot of back and forth in any conflict, any war. And um, this is an example. On uh, one hand, Ukrainian army uh, continues to make advances into the Kursk region. But on the other hand, um, Russia is inching toward the city of Pokrovsk. Again, the distances are very different. Um, the Ukrainians' progress so far is the order of magnitude greater than that of the Russian troops, so that's something. But, of course, that doesn't make it any easier for people who live in the areas that are now occupied by the Russians, because we know that they're not Ukrainians, I mean Russians, are not Ukrainians, and um, they're not nice. Statement uh, that Putin made about People in the Kursk region is frankly laughable. People who live in that area should be insulted for a variety of reasons. First of all, the fact that Putin, who had basically abandoned uh, all the decision making to the local government, saying, oh, people there are suffering, um, that, that's offensive. Second, uh, are they really? You know, are they getting locked up in uh, cellars? Are their teenage daughters getting raped? I don't think so. So right now, yeah, they have to evacuate. Boohoo. But I don't really think Russians are experiencing anything like what Ukrainians experience in the invaded areas. And no surprise yet. There's been another uh, attack on Dnipro, of course, killing somebody, injuring somebody. Just, you know, this doesn't stop. By the way, um, I'd like to point out here that Russian allies don't have the same hang-ups about the use of long-range weapons. For example, if Iran hands over the Iskander missiles, uh, Russia will be able to hit anywhere inside Ukraine. So Ukraine will be routinely under the nationwide missile alert. They are not going to tell Russia, oh, you can't fire inside Ukraine using long-run missiles. No, that the, only Ukraine's allies do that, apparently. There's a good article talking about uh, Ukraine's recruits and... Uh, we have seen this in the photographs, uh, read the stories. A lot of the uh, Russian recruits are really, really young kids, like 18 to 20 year old. As you can see, Ukrainian crowd is kind of different. Uh, it's people of all ages, pretty much. And this basically talks about, you know, their daily life <laughs> while uh, they have uh, Russia suicide drones zooming overhead, they're training then they have to send the footage of their training exercises also by drone to their command and so on and so forth. And again, the 
you know, the contingent includes pretty much people from all walks of life, people who used to have other jobs, who used to have families, who used to have homes, and um, now they are soldiers. And the concerns that they ha are expressing here are valid because once again, we now have a well-documented history of lawlessness and mistreatment by Russian soldiers whenever they come into any Ukrainian town, any area. So what these people are asking, these soldiers are asking, those are all valid questions. I agree with Poland. Absolutely. Unlike Ukraine, Poland is a member of NATO and a member of the EU, and they're getting just about enough of it. Um, I mentioned a lot of times how remarkable it is to me that Poland and Ukraine, who historically have not always been the best of friends, if you want to look up the history between Poland and Ukraine, do it, because it's fascinating. They, they used to be enemies. They used to have territorial disagreements and wars and stuff like that. But again, it's amazing to me how they managed to unite in the face of the common enemy. Because if there's something, if there's anything they both of them don't want, is to ever become part of the Russian Empire again. And so Poland's idea, Poland's suggestion that, you know what, fuck this, we're not going to wait and see for a Russian missile to fly into our territory and ki kill somebody. That's actually a good idea. And to some extent, it, it's kind of um, a little bit of a compensation for the other allies' lack of um, response to Ukrainians' request for permission to use long-range weapons. And another reminder of why this is not a joke. Uh, so yesterday, September 1st, was traditionally the first day of school. Um, this date is still observed across multiple uh, Eastern European countries. Uh, they had it in Poland as well. And these kids, some of them had no school to go to. Some of their schools have been destroyed and classes have been canceled. And um, some of them had to go to school in a subway station somewhere. How can anybody be okay with this? Remember, Ukrainians didn't ask for this. I don't care what Russia thinks is causing that. I mean, you know, they keep pushing the line, oh, we were provoked. Who provoked them into murdering children? Who provoked them into bombing kindergartens? Who provoked them into wiping schools hospitals, maternity wards off the face of the earth? I think the answer is very clear. Nobody. And they're still doing this to Ukraine's children.